Hearing loss is the third most common disorder in adults in the United States, and it costs the economy billions of dollars each year. 10% of the US population experience was considered to be clinically significant hearing loss. Noise-induced hearing loss has been prevalent since the Industrial Revolution, and it was initially most common in men around the retirement age because of their noisy work environments where they use loud machinery on a daily basis. But today, thanks to things like the use of personal earbuds, loud concerts, and noisy bars, noise-induced hearing loss is prevalent in young adults and even children. Your ears aren't the only thing that suffers as a consequence, though. New studies are finding that well-adjusted clinical intervention of hearing loss early on can delay age-related dementia. Chronic noise exposure from the environment causes an acceleration of the normal biological process of aging in the ear, and the number of individuals affected worldwide is expected to reach 1 billion people by the year 2050. So what distinguishes noise or age-related hearing damage from other forms of hearing loss? Noise-induced hearing loss doesn't result in profound deafness, rather its effects become more noticeable for afflicted individuals when trying to recognize speech in noisy environments, like a crowded airport, where a typical complaint would be, I can hear you, but I don't know what you're saying. The auditory system's job is to transform mechanical sound vibrations into neural electrical impulses. When sound waves traveling through the air reach the outer ear, vibrations are sent through the ear canal and the middle ear until they reach the inner ear which is essentially just a fluid-filled tube, also known as the cochlea. The name cochlea is derived from the Greek cochleas, meaning snail shell, given to it because of its spiraling structure. The cochlea is a marvel of intricate cellular architecture. It houses the sensory cells responsible for our hearing, the inner hair cells. These cells form synaptic connections with sensory neurons in the cochlea, called spiral ganglion neurons. These are bipolar neurons that send afferent signals to the auditory cortex, the brain region which processes auditory information via the auditory nerve. The cochlea is tonotopically organized, meaning that it has a gradual spatial arrangement of processing different frequencies, with the lowest frequencies processed at the apex, and increasing frequency processing as we approach the base. The tonotopic organization is maintained throughout all levels of the auditory system, all the way up to the auditory cortex. The inner hair cells have tiny hair-like structures protruding from their apical surface. These are stereocilia bundles and are bathing in a potassium ion-rich fluid called endolymph. The tips of these bundles are in contact with a thin membrane. When sound vibrations reach the cochlea, this membrane shifts its position, causing the bundles to deflect in the direction of the tallest cilia, which opens mechanically gated ion channels on the cilia, allowing potassium ions to rush into the cell. This displacement of positive ions into the cell causes a membrane depolarization in the hair cell, setting into motion a cascade of events including the release of the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate at the synapse. This allows the neuron to transmit the signal to higher processing centers in the brain. In the presence of harmful levels of sound, however, the hair cells release an excessive amount of glutamate at the synapse, which causes a rapid influx of calcium ions at the postsynaptic bouton. This rapid stream of calcium ions causes the bouton to swell and burst. This phenomenon is called excitotoxicity, where the synapses literally excite themselves to death. The term given to this loss of synapses in the inner ear is known as cochlear synaptopathy. Once the synapses are lost, the degeneration of the corresponding neuron follows gradually. If you're exposed to noise loud enough to cause immediate loss of synapses, for example after attending a loud concert, a standard clinical hearing test, the audiogram, will most likely show an elevation in hearing thresholds, which means that the lowest sound level for a given frequency that you can detect now needs to be louder than it was before in order for you to hear it. But this elevation is often temporary. In days to weeks that follow the loud concert, your hearing thresholds will probably go back to the way that they were before. This is known as a temporary threshold shift. Until recently, it was assumed that a recovery in thresholds meant that the ear had also recovered. But thanks to animal studies, we now know that there is an immediate and irreversible damage to the cochlear synaptic connections. The synaptopathy is essentially hidden from the audiogram, and for this reason, this type of hearing loss has recently been referred to as hidden hearing loss. Recent studies have shown that being exposed to even moderate levels of noise for prolonged periods of time also results in the loss of synapses. Of course, louder noise will do damage at a faster rate. In 2014, the fans of the Kansas City Chiefs managed to produce the loudest roar in the history of a sports stadium that reached a piercing level of 142.2 decibels, which is as loud as a gunshot and without a doubt will cause irreversible synaptic and neural damage on the spot. Currently, the only cure for noise-induced hearing loss is the insertion of a cochlear implant, which involves a surgical procedure. So for the time being, the best thing that we can do is protect our hearing when we go to loud stadiums or concerts. So protect your hearing and protect your brain.